Uh, my philosophy, I would say, is interactive in the sense that I, I grew up in a system that was um, entrenched in colonial education where the instructor would do the research, prepare the lecture, lecture, we would take notes and try to remember as much as we could. Um, and, and I was not happy with it. And so I have moved as far away from that as you can imagine. So my own philosophy is to be interactive, to inspire students to do research for themselves, to ask questions for themselves, to explore, to uh, be in conversation. And so uh, what I do is I combine uh, plenary sessions where uh, from time to time I would lecture, I combine that with uh, precepts and conversations with students uh, where there is more in-depth analysis and conversations around the topics or the themes that we look at. So, because uh, I think I think teaching is, is a powerful tool to shape not just uh, individual perspectives but also notions of society, how society functions in a productive way. I think I am helping students explore a sense of themselves, come to a fuller experience, realization of their own identity and their own place in the world. So I teach for the purpose of meaningful, productive living in a world that is quite complex. I do that by asking them to uh, make connections between what the, the biblical text is saying and the interpretive communities to which they belong. So I don't consider meaning to be locked and lodged away in the text itself. I consider meaning to be something that emerges in the process of engaging the text and asking questions and exploring not just uh, uh, as individuals but as a community because I do think the Hebrew Bible um, in particular and, and in the entire Bible as a whole is a, is a community document and should be read as a community document and so I get them to think about uh, what the biblical text says and ask questions about what it says, why it says, it, uh, what are the cultural backgrounds to um, to the text and the ways in which we can engage those cultural perspectives um, in, in the hopes of, of you know, uh, developing meaningful um, values for ourselves and for our community. So it's a very, it's a very interactive. So we read the Bible as a conversation, a conversation partner. One of the things that I do is to insist that it that it be a uh, respectful conversation. Um, I do um, often tell them that every, every belief system, every conviction is welcome. And I find that that is important to say up front because it opens up uh, students for conversation. They don't feel intimidated. They don't feel they, they would be ridiculed. And that is part of creating the environment for, for productive conversation. Because I, I, I do think that the, the best education happens when people critically engage what they believe and why they believe. And do that in conversation with people who may or may not share the same perspectives. And, and in the process, we, we learn. We learn as a community. Um, I, I do understand the, the fact that there is a distinction between the classroom and the, and the, the worship houses where the students go. I do have students who are uh, Christian, I have, I have students who are um, Jewish, I have students who are Muslim, all of them taking the same class. And I have always insisted that they don't um, leave behind their religious convictions and their belief systems, but rather that they bring those to the, in, the interaction with others because this is a document that lives and serves multiple purposes and multiple locations and it's important to create those connections. Um, so 
I, I, I make a point of inviting them to, to bring those. I, I don't consider myself um, simply performing a task of teaching. I teach because that's what I am. I cannot but teach. And what that means for me is that teaching is not restricted to what happens in the classroom. It doesn't um, remain enclosed from the larger conversation about society and the ways in which students navigate the real world outside of the classroom. And so even though the classroom is a fairly well-structured environment where teaching happens, I teach because I think that is precisely the, the space where students learn the skills to navigate a world that is oftentimes not as structured. So teaching for me is a, is, is a part of my identity. It's not just something I do. Um, it's a way of life. My research is driven by uh, questions that sometimes emerge from the classroom. Um, I, I, I do research in anticipation of courses that I would teach. I do research um, in part because of um, the way I, I, I think about society, what is happening in society, what I think uh, students should be learning. And so my research itself feeds my teaching. Uh, it feeds my teaching and the teaching feeds my research. And, and I, I don't think I can separate the two because if I do not do the research then obviously I do not have uh, the, the tools with which to, uh, to effectively communicate with students what I consider to be the values that are important for constructing communal identity uh, and living meaningful lives, holistic lives in the world. It is tough to always know when you get it right. Um, sometimes, sometimes um, you would get the sense that students are learning when they ask questions that you may not be expecting them to ask. In other words, when they begin to think for themselves and to articulate questions beyond what the syllabus is saying, I think that's when you know you're getting it right. So the teaching for me is something that propels, them, that enables them to answer a very basic question, uh, which is how do I continue to do this beyond this classroom? And if I effectively and successfully get them to that point, I, I think I have success. Oh, when the conversations are all over the place, they are not structured. Um, and when um, the, the conversations devolve into simply articulations of individual convictions without critical reflection or interaction with, with others, um, when it becomes uh, a matter of um, what I believe, um, when it simply becomes a matter of um, claiming my own intellectual territory, my own religious territory, um, when the world shrinks into what I I think it should be, then I then I think that something has has been missed um, in the educational process. I think education happens in, in multiple settings, sometimes more formal than others. But I do think that education always happens. Um, like I said earlier, I grew up in a largely oral context where learning happens all the time. It happens at home. It happens um, in the playground. Um, it happens in churches. It happens in schools, obviously. But I do consider that uh, teaching happens in multiple settings, and including the home. Uh, so um, it may not be a formal structured setting, but it's nevertheless equally important.